I hope I've done you proud, Mac Viper. Looks like these cuckoo birds tried to tear up the windows and failed miserably. Why not just buy some shutters or... Ah, what am I saying? They're completely bonkers. I've played with tar enough for today. This looks like some kind of diary or log of some kind. Unlike almost everything in this room, it looks new. Whoa! That seemed to make a lot of things happen at once. Alright, let's see now. October 13th. It's so hard to get accustomed to the sickening stench of this dreadful fishing town, but apparently it's important to him that we establish our base here, so we just take it. Decorating coming along nicely. No end to the work. A lot of long and boring entries follow. Seems like some kind of complicated records. Let me skip ahead a bit. Let's see. July 6th. We're all accustomed to the stench. It's probably imbued in everyone by now. Summon the haunter, and he came in a flickering form of a tall, swarthy man with skin made of ebony. Ignored my words and asked for the book, then disappeared upon my answer. We must find it, no matter what. July 13th. His incomplete form is frustrating. Must find the book. We must find it. That idiot Bright left the hatch open, and Lumen snuck up here into the summoning chamber to try to get the haunter's mark. What did the fool think would happen? We don't even bother storing their ashes in the urn anymore. Just leave them there as a reminder to anyone stupid enough to try that again. August 6th. Sister Halo's matchstick hobby proved to come in handy. Praise the haunter! I could scarcely believe my senses when at last she finalized the structure and Brothers Bright and Gleam dropped the cannonball on it. Not only did it not destroy what she built, but it lodged itself in the circular space above the stone and is exerting such pressure on the lattice work that you can take a shovel to it and it won't cave in. It's good to have some smart people join the ranks for a change. Only she and I know how to breach it and get to the stone, so that should at least keep our numbers from dropping. August 7th. Private investigator making waves in Darkham, looking for leads on the book. Might be a dark blessing in disguise. We just stay on his tail and track him to see if he digs up any leads. The book? The Necronomicon? Is that me they're talking about? August 13th. Rejoicing! It's very possible that the hostess's fetch dog has sniffed out the book. Time to retire him and go for the prize ourselves. Hostess? Why did that sound familiar? Anyway, that crazily angled stone. I wanted it. If only to get back at these star-obsessed maniacs. It's the first book in a row. An arcane symbol adorns its cover. I guess it must have some importance to these starry loons for them to display it like this. I've opened it at its bookmark. The stone from the stars is a window on all time and space. It is within it that the haunter sleeps while the yellow sun reigns. And it is from its circular gate that the haunter's incomplete form rises when the words are spoken. Nor shall he ever rise in his true form until the forbidden book be by his side. No end to the work. The stone from the... It is no it's the second book in a row. There's some kind of symbol on its cover, and that's about it. I guess it must have some importance to these starry loons for them to display it like this. I've opened it at its bookmark. It is known that touching the stone from the stars might cast upon a mortal being the mark of the hunter. But none should do it unless prepared to face his cold black flames and turn to ashes and dust. No living soul can know whom the haunter chooses to mark and grant vision beyond time and place. No end to the work. It's the third book in a row. The cover consists entirely of a weird symbol. I guess it must have some importance to these starry loons for them to display it like this. I've opened it at its bookmark. 
For the butcher is the end of all, and the followers of him who lingers in the night's threshold must keep the slaying one from ever setting eye or laying hand upon the book. The butcher brings but... The rest is unreadable. The butcher? Huh. That's new. Whoa! An immense rusty telescope hanging intimidatingly overhead. Its most interesting feature, a big, convex magnifying lens. Wouldn't know what to do with it. Looks to be quite powerful. It's a magnifying lens, the convex type. I don't think I can pry it out with my bare hands. These dummies tried their best to tear the windows up, but an intense orange light symbolically shines through. It bathes the crazy matchstick structure in a warm glow that strikingly contrasts with the whole starry death cult thing. Dust motes in the light and everything. Nice. Yeah, I know I don't get enough vitamin D, but this is not the time or place. A pretty martial-looking cannonball suspended somehow above that glowing rock by some order of matchstick engineering genius. It's probably there as an extra deterrent to anyone wanting to snatch that purple thing below. It looks really heavy. Like, really heavy. It's held in place firmly by the matches structure. Quite impressive and unmovable. The inscription above it says, Here lie in ashes all brothers and sisters foolish enough to think that the stone from the stars chose them to be marked by the haunter. If the inscription is to be believed, those are human remains in there. I have no use for former cultists, in ash form or not. There's a drawer underneath this urn thing. It doesn't look like it has a lock or anything. Inside the dusty drawer, there was one solitary rusty spoon. Unwritten private investigator wisdom says you never know when you could use a rusty spoon. A delicate and intricate latticework of what looked to be matches surrounding some jagged, shimmering stone and somehow supporting the kind of cannonball what looks like it was made to bring down battleships. I realize how crazy that sounds, yet here it is before me. It's made out of matches. 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 Hmm. Matches. Biting my lip, eyes half-closed with anticipation, I flicked my finger at one match, then another. The apparently fragile construction proved to be impervious to my attempts at unbalancing it. There was damn good engineering when you needed it the least. The structure would not collapse, no matter what. That's some kind of occult scratch. Looks to symbolize that shine rock on the pedestal. It's uh, making me a little uneasy, if I'm being honest. It's just a drawing. Eerie, but a drawing. I examined the darkened stone altar that held the trapezohedron. Creepy thing. Unusual markings adorned all sides of it. It looked as though it had been subject to intense high temperature conditions more than once. I shuddered at the thought of it being sacrificial. Fine dust surrounded it on all sides gently blown to and fro by the draft coming from the open hatch. No idea how they got it up here, but I'm not budging it. That much is obvious. I carefully placed the spoon in between the lens and the metal covering and... Voila! The lens was now mine. I got this convex lens from that huge telescope. It's filthy. 
Blech. The lens is way too dirty to let any light pass through. Sweet. It's a strange, self-illuminating trip, 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 trap, mm, weirdly angled rock thing. Its placement and the highly original security system tell me that this dingus must be of some critical importance to these starry knowledge jamooks. It could be red, or purple, or red and purple at the same time. Hard to tell. Shiny. I'm not the kind of Joe what believes in the woo-woo, but this thing gives me a tough run of the heebies and jeebies, while at the same time, kinda calling to me. I really want to get my greedy private investigator paws on that crazily angled stone. I most certainly did not burst into cold black flames. So much for this numbskull cult credibility. It did feel, uh, weird. Weird. Alright, I am now one cannonball heavier. Let's see what happens. That was a first. And a last. It's the former standard. No, it's just a flagpole. It uh, looks really useful. It would almost fit, but it'd be too loose. I need it firmly stuck in there. Let's get this stick, uh, sticky. There's just one thing I want to say before I do it. Hammer time! You two, here we are. Ugh. Just call me when you need my services. I'm getting as far away from this dump as possible. See yous. Yep, thanks. So, here we are, Kitty. Fishmouth. <sighs> Is this foul, rotting sea life odor in any way mouth-watering to you? 
Please, it's sickening, and I'd literally rather be anywhere else right now, but we've got a job to do. Let's find Finman's before we revisit my lunch and dinner. It's a thuggish-looking big guy smoking a horribly stinky cigarette. I'm not sure I want to mess with this particular local. I don't think we can take him, Buzz. Hello there, sir. Buzz? Off. <laughs> Actually, funny thing about that. I mean it, out-of-towner. Okay. A couple of Fishmuthians. Looks like they're guarding that archway there. They look uh, very, um, iconic. I'm happily surrendering the pleasure of talking to that couple to you. Hey, folks. Mind if I squeeze through? We don't mind or nothing, stranger. We just strongly discourage it. Strongly discourage it? Okay, I can respect that. So, can you let me through anyway? We ain't shopping you. We just strongly discouraging it. Well, it's easy, really. Each one of you just has to take one step, no, half a step in the opposite direction, and we're all happy. We ain't stopping you, stranger, but we ain't moving either. Allow me to introduce myself. My name's Buzz Kerwin, and I'm a tourist here in this beautiful seaside town of yours. Martha. Martha Webfoot. Liz here's my husband, Silas. We's the Fishmuth Citizens Brigade. Proud volunteers. Just watching over things, making sure the festival gonna go smooth. That's our job now. The festival? It ain't got nothing to do with you or your kind. Yeah, that's why we strongly discouraging you from entering Fish Month. But I'm a participant. Really? Judging by your accent, I would have said Eastern Orthodox. No, I, I mean I'm part of the festival. Then you're either a pilgrim or you're one of them entertainers. Pilgrim you ain't because you ain't got the garb and you sure don't smell like one. So that'll make you an entertainer. Let's see that entertainer license. Real artists don't need licenses. Well then, real artists ain't getting any deeper inside Fishmouth. Uh, it wasn't ready. They said just go in without it. Who said that? The, um, the, the, the committee. No license, no entry. Is there anything I can do to convince you to let me through? Boy, you've really given up on trying anything creative like, ain't you? We ain't letting you in without a license. Now, nah, Silas, don't be talking nonsense. We ain't stopping anyone here. Oh, uh, that's right, Martha. Oh, he's just... Strongly discouraging. Gotcha. Look behind you! A three-legged toad! <laughs> well, that must be Skippy, little Bartholomew Liverwort's pet. Cute little fella, bouncing all over the place. Use that third leg as a kickstand, seen it with my own eyes. Oh, brother. I'll be back. We'll be here. They don't look like they'd be easily bribed. It says, Fishmouth Tourist Board, Tourist Information. Sounds useful, I guess. It's fine where it's at. Kitty can't read. Yet.
There's an intense purple light shining through the window in this door. I kind of like purple. Makes for a very moody vibe. I can see why they went with it. Other than that, it's a door. She doesn't come with a lockpick feature. Hello? Go away. But maybe I have a very important message to deliver. Go away. <sighs> Green light shining through this particular door's window. I don't know what's going on in there, but it's intensely green. You'd probably need protection glasses in there. She doesn't come with a lockpick feature. Hello? Go away. Oh, but you see, I'm, I'm, I'm just interested in local culture and... Go away. Okay. <laughs> 